Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to your collective worship. It's me, Barry, and as you can see, I'm in the graveyard at the moment at the church. If I turn around here, you can see the church behind me right there. And then if we go around here, this is where the church room used to be. And it's now a bit of a building site because that's where, uh, that's where the builders are building our new extension. And you can just see a digger just passing around there. So it's a little bit noisy at the moment. But I wanted to come outside and talk to you first about the church. Now, you come to the church sometimes in the past when it's been uh, an Easter service or a Christmas service and uh, different other things that we've done. Now I wonder, have a think, can you tell me what you reckon the purpose of a church is? I mean, do you think that we're only here on a Sunday morning? That's all we do? We just come to church on a Sunday morning and that's it? Um, do you think we just spend all our time sitting there and praying to God? Is that all we do? I wonder. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 30 seconds to talk to your partner and the person you're sitting next to and have a think about what we do as a church and what the purpose of a church is. Okay, so 30 seconds, go. Did you ever think? I wonder what you thought the purpose of a church was. Well, here we are. We're in the church. There behind us is some new building bits going up. It's all quiet in here at the moment because uh, it's just me here. Although through that door down there is the builders who are uh, doing the new extension. There's a Christian author, and his name is Rick Warren, and he suggests that the purpose of a church is worship, which is praising God, fellowship, which is meeting together, discipleship, learning about God, and ministry, teaching about God, and mission, which is helping others. Now, all these five things come from the great commandment which is in the bible and it's in the book of matthew uh, chapter 22 verses 37 to 40 and it says this love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind this is the first and greatest commandment and the second is like it love your neighbor as yourself now here at holy savior we try to do all of those things, but today we're going to look at mission or helping others. Now, someone once said that a church is like a club that is designed for those who aren't members. Now, that means the people who come to church work hard to love our neighbours. Those who don't come to our church Many of them don't even know that we exist here in Bitten, but we do it because God tells us to. He loves us and he blesses us and he wants us to do the same for others. Now we have the power to help others to become heroes for God. God made us and he thinks we are very special. God's story, God made people. So part of God's story is about how he made people, and it goes like this. The very beginning of time, God made the world, and he did it just by speaking. 
He made the blue sky and planets with rings and galaxies exploding with stars. He made puffy clouds and dry land and sparkling water. He covered the earth with deserts and mountains and planted forests and jungles. He sprinkled the world with flowers and bugs and birds and fish and animals of all kinds. It was a perfect home, full of fun creatures. And God called all of it good, but he wasn't done creating yet. God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. This time though, God didn't just speak. First, he took some dust from the ground. Then he breathed into the dust with his own breath. By doing that, he created the very first person, a man called Adam. God put Adam in an amazing garden called Eden. But Adam was different than the other living creatures God had made. In fact, God put Adam in charge of everything else. But Adam needed a friend. So the Bible says that God caused him to fall into a deep sleep. While Adam was sleeping, God made a woman from one of Adam's ribs. Her name was Eve. And she and Adam were free to live happily in the garden where they could walk and talk with God. It was perfect. Once Adam and Eve were together caring for the garden, God didn't just call the world good, he called it very good. See, people are God's favorite. Remember, we were made in his own image, in his likeness. The Bible says, God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. We don't know exactly what it means to be created in God's image, do know it means he made us like him. So our eyes, our skin, our teeth, our bones are perfectly crafted by God. Our personalities, our sense of humor, our sensitivities, our hobbies, our talents, everything is made by God so that we can be like him. And we have abilities that none of the animals have. We can paint pictures and write poems. We can solve math problems, explain what we're thinking, and invent cool new things. Whether we like to run, teach, build, or anything else, God understands us. Of course, we don't always act perfectly, but that's another part of the story. When God made Adam and Eve, he crafted them in his image. He made them, and us, like him. That's the story of how God made people. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God made the whole world. It was a perfect home. He called it good. He breathed into dust and made Adam. He took one of Adam's ribs and made Eve. Then he called the world very good. He made us like him, in his image. He understands us, and we are his favorite. And that's a part of God's story. So there are lots of ways that we can love and help our neighbours. One of the things that we do here at church is that we have collections where people can donate money. And we normally pass these around the church uh, in the morning when we would all meet together. A little bit harder to do at the moment. Now it's, uh, now it's COVID and we can't meet at the church, but there are still ways to actually give money to the church. And that money is given away to many charities and mission partners that we have here at church. There's a lot. Some of them you might not have even have heard of. You've probably all heard of Namalemba. You know we helped the village of Namalemba in Uganda because you have helped us as well in the past. And we send money to them which helps to build water tanks and dig wells. Money is also used to help the school over there and the maternity hospital that they have, which is a great thing to be able to do. But we also help charities like the Leprosy Mission. Now, leprosy is a disease that we read about in the Bible, but it also still exists today. And the Leprosy Mission have built many special hospitals they train and they educate people as well to fight for people's rights. 
It's a fantastic charity, and we're part of, uh, it's great to be part of helping them to do their work. We also help a charity called MAF, which is the Mission Aviation Fellowship. They fly these tiny little planes to remote areas of the world, bringing food and equipment and medical supplies to people in need. They also fly people to hospitals when they need it, if they don't have any way to get there by themselves, as they might live hundreds of miles away from a hospital. Now, they're just a few of the many charities that we help here at Holy Saviour. And churches all around the country, all around the world, do the same things with other charities. Now, closer to home, we help Basics Bank by collecting food each week, which we give to them, and they distribute to families who might be in a bit of difficulty at the time. You have helped with that as well at Harvest, when you've brought in donations of food. Now, during COVID and the lockdowns that we've had, we've also been working with the charity TLG. That stands for Transforming Lives for Good. And this is where we collected food and essentials and treats and were able to give these away to some families who just needed a bit of help at the time. We did this at Christmas and at Easter and at last year's summer holiday. And these were called Boxes of Hope. It was a fantastic thing to be able to do. Coming up soon is Christian Aid Week. Now, you might have had something through your door that you might have seen with this logo on. There you go. Christian Aid Week, the 10th to the 16th of May. It probably came in a little pack and it came through your door. And, uh, and you can put money in that and people, Christians uh, will come around uh, later on and collect from you if you put some money in there they will collect some money and that charity uh, works with local churches and communities to fight injustice respond to humanitarian emergencies campaign for change and help people claim the services and the rights that they are entitled to and one of the big things they are trying to help with this year is climate change and how they recognize that the poorest people in the world have been the worst affected by climate change. They have also done the least to cause climate change as well. Vulnerable communities have been battling climate change and its impacts for decades. And this climate crisis hurts us all, but people living in poverty fight the worst of it every day. And this is a big task for Christian Aid to work on, which is why they need uh, money. So. Um, if you've got some spare pennies and uh, you've got that envelope uh, come through your door with Christian Aid, I wonder, maybe you might want to do something amazing, put a little few pennies in there and uh, help to make a big difference in the world. Now the creation story, the video we looked at earlier, it tells us that God created the world and humans. So we should show love to the world and look after nature, as well as looking after people. And if everyone is made in the image of God, then we should show love to everyone, even those we don't know or we'll never meet. It doesn't matter if we don't meet them. To know that we've helped someone is a fantastic feeling. And it makes God happy and it makes us happy, knowing that we've done something great uh, to help someone's life. Uh, make their life just a little bit better. So hopefully you've seen that a church isn't just about meeting in su on Sundays. It isn't just about praying to God all the time. There's so much more that happens uh, in a church. The church is not even the building. The church is the people who, uh, who meet together and do some fantastic stuff. And uh, there's going to be a lot more stuff that we're going to be doing. Once this building project is finished and we can meet again, there's going to be some fantastic groups starting, new bits to do, new bits to see. And it'd be great to see you all here. And it'd also be great to come out and see you guys soon at school. Really looking forward to that when we can do that. So I'm just going to pray. And if you'd like to make this prayer your own, you can say amen at the end. Father God, Thank you for creating us. Thank you that you love us so much. You made us in your own image. 
You gave us the power to help others in need, those less fortunate than ourselves at the moment. Please help us to help those, whether it's money they need, or clothing, or shelter, whatever it might be that they need. Please help us to help them. Amen. Well, guys, it's been great to see you, or not see you. It's still online at the moment, but hopefully that will change soon. So have a great rest of the day, uh, and I'll see you as soon as I can. Take care. Bye.